So the very next thing, we're just going to do a quick touch point on methods. Now we've been using methods the entire time since we've been building this um, program. Uh, but I definitely want to kind of go a little bit more in depth about what methods truly are. So up top in our main method, we'll define a new method called methods. And we'll come right back down to the bottom here. And again, just doing this alone is creating a method. Uh, so I'm pretty much demonstrating it right now. Uh, so methods, cool. So in here, what we want to do, and, and let me just explain a little bit about methods. So methods represent the behavior of your, uh, of your application. A class can have state and a class can have behavior. The state is represented through fields and variables, and the behavior is represented through methods or function calls. So generally, in, in no matter what object-oriented programming language you're using, you'll generally have functions or interchangeably named methods that will control the behavior of your application. So in this case, what I want to demonstrate is I want to, I want to say hello to the user. So I'm going to define a new method here called say hello. We're just going to do a simple method. And as you can see, as usual, I have an error message here with a squiggly line underneath saying that this does not exist. And so what we have to do is we have to define what the method looks like. So let's just make this nice and simple. I'm just going to go below here and I'm going to define a new method. And this is where I'm going to introduce you guys to access modifiers. So up to now, we've been doing a lot of static, um, static void and then the method name, right? What I want to do now is I'm going to introduce you to a new, some new keywords. So here we're going to say private static void, and we're going to say say hello. And basically what I did is I said, I specified that this method should only be accessible within this file or within this class. Right, so that's basically what's happening here. Is only specify is only accessible within this class. So you use private in that case. There's also access modifiers such as public, which means it's available to the entire application. You also have protected, which is part of an inheritance structure, where for instance you'll have a parent or a base class that would inherit, uh, that would be inheritable by child classes. And in the child classes, you would define a protected method, or even in the base class, you'll define a protected method that would extend that behavior only to the child classes. An example of that would be, for example, if you want to define a custom exception class and you want to inherit from a base exception class, you can define protected um, fields or properties within that class if you wanted to. We're not going to go that deep into protected here. Um, just know that there is usually uh, just two main ones you'll be using, which is public and private. Um, and, you know, there's also a default one. If it's default, then usually by default it is um, public. But in this case, we're only caring about public and private. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to output to the console. Let's say console, the right line. And basically what I just want to show you is how it works. Now you've been, you've been noticing this the entire video, spelling right line incorrectly, sorry. Uh, let's just say hello there, right? So again, kind of so, the same thing we've been doing up to now. Um, so let me just go ahead and run this and see what we get back. All right, so we get back hello there. So that's nice and simple. That's the simplest way to explain it. Even, um, even though this is marked as private, we can access this method because it's within the same uh, file, within the same class. Okay, so generally that's the reason why we can access this say hello method. Um, if this were in a different class and it were marked as private, we would not have access to this method. We would either have to define it as public or we would have to like set up a certain kind of structure where we can get access to the underlying function. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep into that in this video. Just understand that nine times out of 10, you'll just be marking anything as private if it's within the same class and does not need to be accessible to other parts of your application. And you would set public methods whenever you want it to be globally accessible. That's generally how it works in a nutshell. So let's go back up here. Um, what I want to do is let's define a couple of variables. I want to demonstrate some other things. So I'm going to define a variable, um, an integer var variable where a is equal to 10. 
Um, and then B is, let's say, equal to 20. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to get the sum of these numbers, right? So this is a case where, and I'm going to show you this. Let me just write this out. So let's say int sum, and I'm going to define a new method called add, right? That will add these two numbers together. Now, as it stands, if I defined it like this, there's just no way for this method to know what these values are. So what I would have to do is I would have to pass these values in as arguments or parameters to the add method and then define this add method and specify the parameters and their data types within the method signature. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to pass A and B into this method and then I'm going to come down here and below this say hello method, I'm going to define another private method. So let's just say private. Uh, static. Remember, it has to be static um, because I'm calling it from within a static context in the same file. Um, and then we're, we'll just say add. Now, in, I definitely have to specify, I can't just say A comma B, excuse me, uh, what happened there? I can't just say A comma B. I actually have to specify the data type. So let's say int A comma int B. So these are the two arguments that are being passed into this method. So with that being said, I can now access these values within this method. You know, so basically value by reference here. Um, so what I can do is uh, in here, we could just return. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to console that right line first. You know what? No, actually, because I defined it, what we actually what we want to do up here, guys, sorry about that. What we want to do is right here, I want to return the sum of this. So now I'm going to introduce you to return types. So up to now, we've been using void, um, which means that we're not returning anything to the caller method. That's what we've been using up to now. So this time, I'm going to return an integer. So instead of void, I'm just going to specify int. And you can return various different types. You can say uh, string. You can return a type. For example, if you had a person class, you, re you could return a person. It's all up to you. You could return anything that's built in or anything custom as part of a return type. In this case, I want to return an integer, a number. So I'm going to specify an int return type. And all I'm going to do is just say return keyword A plus B. And that's going to do the calculation for me. It's going to add A and B together and give me the value to be returned to the caller. So now if you go back here, if you think about this in a sense of baseball, I'm throwing A and B as baseballs to this add method, and, it, and then this add method catches it like the umpire would, and then it would return it or throw back the ball to the caller or the pitcher, in this case, which will be this line up here, this int sum equals add. So in here now, in this int sum, I should have the return value that's returned from the add function. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to console.write line, and I'm just going to say sum, and we're going to just output the sum. And let's see if that works. And like magic, we get back 30 because 10 plus 20 equals 30. So that's working perfectly. So now you know how to work with void methods or voided methods, and you now know how to work with methods with return types that are non-nullable return types.